Let's make it a good day. Today on The Jason Show, one single person has saved Hollywood. One. Who is it? You'll find out in the hot dish. Then, nothing is better than a good dive bar. But where are the best ones? Star Tribune food journalist extraordinaire Joy Summers is back with her list. And the one, the only, Jennifer Hudson will join me live to talk about her hit talk show and what's in store for season two. The Jason Show starts right now. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Welcome, my sidekick sister, Me. Kendra Mark, everybody. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello. What are, you, what are you doing? How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you doing? Everything's fine. Everything's are you busy? Fine. No. What's, go, what's going on? The audience knows what you, what's going on. I know what's going on. I think we're going to tell the TV people what's going on. Why do you seem distracted? We have a job to do. we got to entertain America here. Are you talking to me? I am talking to you. Okay. Why, are you, why do you seem very distracted? Because the chicks are officially coming to the state fair. It was announced like two days ago. And yeah. if you're in your fan club, the tickets go on sale at 10 a.m., which is right now, today, which is right now, which means that my sister is in charge. And I'm like, do not forget about me. Okay. And she just texts, Chloe, can I, can I call you? I'm like, no. Everybody okay. just get the tickets. Now, Kendall, here's the deal. Never rely on other people for something that important. I'm literally here. What am I supposed to do? But your old buddy Jason would have taken care of you. Well, can I go? Now, I would have. Now, now go ahead. Check the audio. The studio audience it's fine, doesn't guys, care. Right? I okay, don't yeah, care. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. I mean, I do care. I mean, we do have a show to do. But if things, yeah. if you get really distracted, there's a very nice lady in row one that Who looks like she, she can yeah, host. Uh, she can sidekick right there, right there. Thank you. Right there. Thank there you. she is. Okay. I'm talking. What is this? Let's make a deal. We're just <laughs> booming the camera to various people. What is that? The Price is Right. Mm -hmm. No, the woman in the aqua, the aqua right there. She can co. She can sidekick with me right Fine. there. Yeah. Right there. She can do it. That's great. Come on down. My sisters are currently on the phone with each other, also online, figuring out so we can all sit together. Okay. Again, why? Okay. The, the, you're, you, you should have been in charge of this. I was in charge of this. Because I coordinated everything. I me, am the cruise director. Let me tell you, because can I tell you a story that I don't think, I will, if you've watched the show since season one, you might remember this, but may I tell you a story? Please. This is why your old buddy Jason could have handled this for you. Because in, in year one of this show, way back 2014, 2015, uh -huh. uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens opened. You know, and it was the first Star Wars movie since 2005, and if you don't know this, if, if you're new to the show, like a woman named Carol in Indiana, uh, if you're new to the show, I'm a huge... <laughs> got it. Thank you. The audience got that little <laughs> passive aggressive dig I just got in there. Go to our Facebook page, you'll see what I mean. Anyway, but if you're new to the show, you don't know that I, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, giant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the press screening, the advanced screening for Force Awakens was 10 a.m. That's what time this show's on live. So what did I do? What? I did a live shot. I got in my car live, yep. and they followed me all the way to the theater. <laughs> Tom Butler from the Fox 9 Morning News hosted, <laughs> and I got in my damn car. Eric was in there. We went live from my car. We drove to the theater. Uh huh. Yep. I talked about how excited. I got out of the car and peace out. I got in the theater, and and then Tom hosted the rest of the show. So you're telling me I could have sat at my desk and just taken live shots with Eric, and no, then you could have just done what I'm done telling what you, you is do. you could have sat here, you could have done it, and we would have laughed and and, and, and made you nervous for 20 minutes. I'm already nervous for I know, 20 minutes. But it would have we could have done it for the show. Is when I so oh, always, always content. Always for the ask show. your old buddy Jason. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I would have I would have hooked you up. Okay, well. And I don't rely whether it's. Colin is the only person you, if you want tickets, mm -hmm. you call Colin Matheson. Uh, forget me, I'm the lesser Matheson. If you mm -hmm. want travel, you, he's the most organized human being on earth. Mm -hmm. uh, his boss, 
is the because he he'll do, he should have he could have handled that for you. I know. I'm the one in the family that's usually like whenever when the COVID vaccines came out, I was like, I'll get everybody. Don't worry. I'll yeah, handle that's it. Colin in my family. I'm so disorganized. I have no. It's not a strength of mine. Okay. Well, I put Chloe and Ellie in charge. And okay. Well, keep us updated. Let us know when you get your. T I'm going to notice. I said when. Yeah. Note when you get the tickets. Let us know. Okay. Okay. Right okay. now, though, I, I think we should do a show. Yeah. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. <laughs> First up, my dear friends, Tom Cruise and Steven Spielberg. They were in the same room on Monday. Uh, at the luncheon for the Academy Awards. You know, they do a little luncheon with cold cuts and stuff. And according to those with really good hearing, so basically people were spying, <laughs> Steven Spielberg paid Mr. Cruz one heck of a compliment. So the iconic director told Tommy Boy that his movie, Top Gun Maverick, saved Hollywood's Earth. Yes. <laughs> and... And may have saved, may have saved theatrical distribution as a whole. Uh, according to onlookers slash spies, mm -hmm. Tom looked humbled by the compliment from uh, Sir Stephen. Now you may remember Tom pushed hard for the studio, uh, for Paramount, to hold Maverick for a theatrical release. Because you guys may not remember this, that movie was supposed to be released like 18 times. Mm -hmm. uh, it, came, it was supposed to come out during the pandemic when we were all watching movies at home. Anyway, Tom was so smart, he said, said to Paramount, wait, and it paid off to a tune of a half a billion dollars worldwide. It is all, it really was the movie that motivated all of us to get, even if we didn't want to go to a theater, it motivated people to go to a theater because of word of mouth, because it really was good. I knew that it was something when my brother-in-law, uh, T, I, I think the last movie T saw in theaters was maybe Gremlins in 1983. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when T went to the movie, I thought, mm -hmm. this is something, mm -hmm. you know? It kickstarted the whole thing, because if, even if you didn't go to that, then you started looking at, well, what else is in theaters? Other people just went to this, they had a great time. So now it's just normal again, you know? And again, if it wasn't for those uh, uh, moron people that talk during movies, uh, <laughs> going to the movies is still a joy, it's magical. There's something about it, I'll say it until the day I die, if it wasn't for people who talk, I'm just telling you. Anyway, moving on. Not going to go on about that again. I was already on TikTok for that earlier this month. Okay, next in the dish, JK, or, uh, Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling is hoping to clear the air when it comes to some of her past comments on the transgender community. She's featured, the reason this is bubbling up again is because J.K. is featured in a new podcast coming out next week called The Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling. A teaser for the podcast came out. Let's listen to it. We'll talk about it on the other side. I never set out to upset anyone. However, I was not uncomfortable with getting off my pedestal. And what has interested me over the last 10 years, and certainly in the last few years, the last two, three years, particularly on social media, you've ruined your legacy. Oh, you could have been beloved forever, but you chose to say this. And I think you could not have misunderstood me more profoundly. I don't know about that, but here's the deal. JK says she's not transphobic, uh, but hasn't stayed silent on her views of gender. I'm not gonna go into all of that. If you wanna, if you wanna read about it, research it, it, it's fascinating on which side you'll come down. The new podcast comes out next Tuesday and explores the entire Harry Potter legacy, meaning that this host didn't just look at the current criticism of JK mm -hmm. and how people are uh, fans, some fans are canceling her because of her views of the transgender community, but it also looks at the view of some religious folks when Harry Potter came out that mm -hmm. it was anti Christian, that it was about witches and evil and Satan. Yeah. So it looks at the controversy over Harry Potter as a whole, mm -hmm. which there was a lot yeah. at the beginning of the, the, the fandom and now connected to the author. Isn't that fascinating when you think back in time to when those books came out? I was about the same age as Harry was yeah. when they came out. And so my mom was like, this is really big in the UK. I got it for you at the book fair. We read it and then every, and then she said something to my dad, like people are talking about how this is witchcraft and like people are making such a huge deal out of it. And it was a children's book. Yeah. Like it, it's kind of nuts. And I, I kind of have, and I'm sure I, I, I will make some people not happy with my opinion on this. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle with this. And I, I gave you a version of my opinion on this topic a few days ago. 
But as far as, you know, JK is one of those cases where can you separate the artist and what the artist does with their property? Meaning, can you still be a fan of what she created if you don't agree with her stance on a particular issue? Because are you supporting her? Because, you know, like there's a game right now called Ho Hogwarts Legacy yes. that uh, people are boycotting because they say you're putting money in JK's pocket. Here's where I have a problem with that area of so-called cancel culture. This is just me personally. I have a problem with that because if you start taking that purity test, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to really examine every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to, if you're gonna, oh, I'm not gonna support JK because she uh, has these views on transgender folks, which I don't agree with. I wanna be clear, if this is clipped out, I don't agree with what JK says. However, am I not gonna go to Harry Potter Park or movie? Because then I'm gonna start looking at uh, maybe the fast food restaurant that I go to. Mm -hmm. Do they donate to anti-gay causes? Uh, I better look at the department stores I go to. Do I look at the places I work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's a purity test that I don't think anybody could survive. Right. And I, I'm serious. You, got, you better look at everything that you support if you're gonna put Harry Potter through that test. You better look at everything that you consume to say to make sure they survive a 100% test like that. Mm -hmm. I doubt that they will. I doubt that it will. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. We're going to take a break. A lot more to come when we come back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Before we continue, I know America is as concerned as I am. Did Kendall get tickets to the Chicks concert? How's that going? We got tickets, baby! Yeah. Your sister came through? Woo. Both of them. One of them said, holy cow, that was so stressful. And the other one was like, I'm still shaking, but we did it. <laughs> and and so, are they good? Are you happy yeah, with them? We're in the plaza, so we're down on the main level. That's good. We're all together, too, which is great since they bought them separately. But I'm oh, so I'm happy for you. Thank you. That's I love great. the chicks. Yeah, I do too. I love the chicks. <laughs> goodbye, Earl. That's it's my favorite song by them. Oh, goodbye. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's you my know, papa's we're... name. I thought you were saying goodbye to my papa. <laughs> goodbye, like, yeah. Papa. Did he end up in the back of the pickup truck too? No. My papa had a pickup truck, actually. He really did. <laughs> he ran moonshine in Tennessee. I'm sure he had a few. Ooh. Yeah, he was a coal yeah, my papa Earl, Betty and Earls. Uh -huh. Uh, he ran moonshine. He, he worked in the coal mines in Tennessee. This explains so much. Yeah. And when he couldn't work in the coal mines anymore, yeah. he still had uh, guys that he loved down there, and he would he ran moonshine down That's to the guys. That's so cool. Uh, and, That's yeah, a great story. He made biscuits. Mm -hmm. He would he would uh, run a moonshine, and then come back and make his biscuits, and then take the yeah. So my gra cool. yeah my papa was a cool guy. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Charles Barkley was on with Jimmy Kimmel last night. Uh, she's turning 60, he's turning 60 soon, and talked about the gifts Shaq usually buys for people. I love Barkley so much. It's our Late Night Rewind. Like your, your, your work, co-workers get you Christmas, I mean, birthday presents for your 60th? Like, well, Ernie and Ernie Kenny and Kenny and so. will probably do something nice and thoughtful. Okay. And Shaq is probably gonna do what he do every Christmas, give us stuff that he's endorsing. <laughs> it, I'm saying, y'all, like er, me, Ernie, and Kenny, we always get something like, what can I get Jimmy? Something nice and thoughtful. And our give come down to what crap is Shaq endorsing? <laughs> like, yo, man. You in this commercial, this is not a gift. It's not thoughtful. So you get like a box, it'll be a big tube of Icy Hot or something uh, like that. No, uh, uh, he's got a jewelry line uh -huh. of watches. And we're like, yo, man, you endorsed this. this is, there's no thought here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I could see Shaq doing that, too. Uh-huh, he'd be like, no, I thought about it. Here's my watch yeah. that I didn't pay for. I uh -huh. endorse it. Uh -huh. yeah. Here's some icy hot to go with it. I love <laughs> I love Shaq so much. I love uh, I'm Barkley. Uh, more late night for you. Kihu Kwan was on with Colbert. If that name isn't familiar, it should be and it will be. He stars in the movie Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. He was also in Temple of Doom and The Goonies. Data. Uh, and is considered a front runner for the best acting so, uh, best supporting actor Oscar, and he talked about running in 
to Harrison Ford, his indie co-star at D23, which is a Disney kind of fan club, for the first time in 38 years. Look. And, uh, and my assistant came running up to me and says, Harrison Ford is just right outside the green room. And, uh, and I got really nervous. My heart was pounding. And, uh, and he says, do you want to go see him? And I said, of course I want to go see him. So I walked out, and sure enough, 15 feet away, I saw him talking to Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who is starring with him in Indy 5. Yeah. Uh, and as I get closer, he turns to me, and he takes one look at me, and all of a sudden, he has that classic Harrison Ford grumpy look, like this. <laughs> and he raises his finger, like then points it at me. He says, and I got really scared, because I thought he, you know, he's thinking I'm a fan. He's gonna say, don't you get near me, right? But instead, he says, are you short round? And immediately, I was transported back to 1984 when I was a little kid, looking up to him, and I said, yes, Indy. <laughs> How can you not love him? <laughs> I gotta, he says Steven Spielberg still sends him a Christmas gift every single year. Yeah, he is so likable. You know, producer Ted, and why would he? You know, Ted was younger, just like you. He mm -hmm. didn't know uh, Goonies or Indiana Jones, and he didn't know, and then he had to watch that clip for the show, and he's like, you watch that interview, and you immediately know why he is the favorite and a favorite mm -hmm. of the voting body, because he's so sweet and, and, gen and genuine mm -hmm. in his love of the fact that Hollywood has rediscovered him. Yeah, well, and you just, anybody that has that energy, you just feel it from across the room, right? Or across the TV, you're like, you're just good energy, good vibes. Well, well also you've heard stories for decades, kid actors, Hollywood gobbles them up, they love him, they get all this attention and when they grow up, they discard them like facial tissue. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the fact that Hollywood rediscovered him, mm -hmm. I love that. It's, oh, I, on Oscar night, that's the only award I really care about. I want him to win so bad. Next in the dish, speaking of Harrison, he's not slowing down anytime soon. The president of Marvel Studios says Mr. Ford is coming on board. In a new interview with Entertainment Weekly, which isn't weekly anymore, it's monthly, Kevin Feig <laughs> says Harrison, <laughs> Kevin Feig says Harrison will play the president of the United States. In Captain America, New World Order, which is gonna come out in 2024, Kevin, you know he's the grand poobah of Marvel, also said writers are hard at work on how to continue the story of Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Because there were rumors that Tom Holland wouldn't be back for another Spider-Man. He also said Marvel's Disney Plus streaming shows won't be as frequent as they have been over the last two years, which is good. And we, they need to space them out mm -hmm. a little bit, plus, all the streaming services are doing this. They all came out, released 8 million things, spent $8 billion, right. and now their bottom lines are hurting. So mm -hmm. we're gonna be seeing fewer original shows on all the streaming, especially Disney Plus. And if they're putting all those eggs into the basket of we're gonna make more of these big movies that you all love, I think everybody's okay with that. Yeah, I just wanna know, come on, D Disney's, can we go back to, Hi, Bob Iger. Um, oh, goodness. I know Bob watches our show. Bob Iger loves our show. And he knows that I love him. So, Bob, hi. Um, could you please uh, let us know what you're doing with Star Wars, uh, with this new Star Wars movie? Thank you. I love you. There we go. Next to the dish. Did you know he has a book? Yeah, whatever. Kendall just laughed at me because I recommend Bob's book all the time, but I do love him. Anyway, next in the dish, it's a weenie roast on the... <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> gotta, I gotta come to rehearsals. I would have caught that. <laughs> Audience, just wait. <laughs> Let me read this again. Next. It's a weenie roast on the new season of Naked and Afraid. That's the show. Slowly, the studio audience is getting it. That, that gentleman right there gets it. That's right. <laughs> That's the show where contestants are totally nude while tra traversing the wilderness for three weeks. Well, TMZ has obtained video from the new season where one of the contestants got a little too close to an open flame. And apparently, a hot coal popped out of the fire and landed on the contestant's Sam's little soldier's helmet. Oh. 
the top of his privates. Yes. <laughs> Darth Vader's little helmet, just right, bop, right there. <laughs> Medics were on hand to provide relief. The new season premieres on Discovery Plus on Sunday. <laughs> back to the Dixie Chicks. There we go. Back to the Chicks. Can I tell you, even if you're on a show called Naked and Afraid, uh, take it for, from your old pal Jason, mm -hmm. who has one of those. Uh, find a... <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Yes. Well, there are, there are people in our audience that probably wonder sometimes, but I do have one. And uh, find a shrub or like something to cover it if you're gonna be by an open flame. Because embers, I'm not even joking, embers jump out, you know? And you don't think, even the security guard even got, yes! Oh, right? It's getting hot I don't know there. why I'm looking at you for that, but I'm just saying. Yes, right, yeah. yes. I don't have one of those to clarify. But y'all, go to TMZ and look at the video, it's, and then you can watch the premiere. It's, poor guy. It's not graphic, but he's howling in pain. And then you see, like, <laughs> Nurse Nelly, like, you know, getting, you know, Clean putting a up. little bandage on it, or you know what I mean? Anyway, little hat. Next, oh. <laughs> next, next. <laughs> I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna move on. Okay. The director of the Joker, Todd Phillips, is working on a sequel and dropped a, a teaser pick yesterday. Oh, there it is. Lady Gaga is in the new film. Half of our staff basically fainted when this came out. <laughs> Lady Gaga is in the new film. That's why people are passing out. And they believe that she's going to be playing uh, comic book uh, supervillain Harley Quinn. Filming is underway. The movie's going to be released in the fall of 2024. So we do have a, a while to wait for it. But uh, yeah, look at that. Intense picture. So it's very, look at her eyes. Yeah. I mean, look at him. I mean, it's the Joker for heaven's sake. I think that they're in the asylum together. Oh, I okay. think that's where. <laughs> like us. Just like us. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. It's Did you here. see the first Joker? The one with him, with uh, uh, Phoenix? No, I didn't, because I remember that Batman and then everything that happened after that Joker and what happened, what's his name? Well, I just, I felt funny about it. I don't understand anything that you just I said. Know. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I did not see it. Yeah, it's very dark. I liked it, I, I didn't love it. Like, I'll never watch it again. Like, see, I, watch, I don't want to watch that. I don't want to feel heavy afterwards. Yeah, then don't watch it, because it's very heavy. I'd rather feel heavy from like eating a box of donuts than watching the Joker, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. This audience is like, yeah. are they hungry? <laughs> are you all hungry? Can we, Eric, can you run the Cub and get these people donuts, please? Seriously. <laughs> Cub's right down the road. Well, Brad's not doing anything. Brad, go get these people donuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pink sweatshirt in the front row is going to wait for you, Brad. Go, go to, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of our audience, it's time to meet our first JVIP of the week. Meet Christine Lout from Baxter, Minnesota. She says, I'm the best recipe to start any day. Two cups of humor, one cup of love, one dash of sass, and a pinch of sarcasm. <laughs> That's a great, great. I mean, if the creative service department's listening, take that as a, yeah. Christine says, the staff and I make every day a great day. Yeah, it's all about our staff. She gets a Jason Show mug in her to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World, and a $150 gift card to our latest sponsor. We love them, the Institute of Advanced Aesthet Aesthetics. Ooh. There we go. Hey, I got permission to finally say this. It's open? Yep. It's open. So if you have a tween in your house, mm -hmm. they're going to faint like those goats, like that. <laughs> You know Jojo Siwa? All the kids love her. Yeah. They love her. She's huge. She's huge. Jojo, from, she was from... Uh, so you think, I mean, Dance Moms from forever ago. So you and think so you think dance. dance? She's going to be in our studio tomorrow. So, so, mm -hmm. if you would like to be in our studio audience, uh, tickets are open right now. Go to eventbrite.com or just download the Eventbrite app. You're going to use... Everybody uses Eventbrite now. Search for The Jason Show. Click on tomorrow and you will be here. So if you love JoJo Siwa, buy, t buy tickets. We don't charge you. Yeah, they're free, yeah. <laughs> you don't even get donuts for heaven's sake. Anyway, we'll be right back, back in a moment. <laughs> Coming up, I love her, the one and only Jennifer Hudson will join me live to talk about her talk show and of course, what it is like being an EGOT winner. Mm-hmm. And Joy Summers is back with her list of the very best dive bars. 
That and more when we return. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. Great audience today. Well, our first guest this morning is more than halfway through her first season as a daytime talk show host, and you better get used to her because she's not going anywhere. She's coming back for a season two. Audience, give it up for the one, the only, Jennifer Hudson. I'm not going. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in there. Thank you. No, I love it. How you doing? I am wonderful. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for being here. Okay, I gave you this comp. <laughs> I gave you this compliment when we talked right before your season premiere. I have set. Uh -huh. in, I have set envy. I, I we, like. We have a good set here. Fox did good by us too. But you have a great set. You have a great. You set. You like my set? You like it? What? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Look at your couch. Thank you. You see my couch? You should come sit on it too. It's nice and mushy oh. and comfortable. I got good old blankets up here for you. Come I'll, on I'll, through, Jason. I'll be right there. I'll book. There's a there's a 1 p.m. flight to LA out of Minneapolis. I'll be right, right. there. I'm gonna be looking for you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you're 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 halfway through the first season. So I want to ask, as, as a guy that does a job similar to this, to what you do, well, yes. I, similar, I do a damn talk show. What am I talking about? Anyway, what? Yes, yes you do. Wh what is harder than you thought it was going to be at the beginning of the season? That is a good question. Well, because it's all a whole new world to me, I want to say all of it. Like, <laughs> just learning the ropes and processing so much. It's like a thousand people talking to you at one time about 10 different things. Yes. <laughs> you know, and just being able to keep up. I will say the pace, keeping up with the pace. And then I, my biggest goal is to simply be me, you know, but respecting the base of the talk show world and the space of how it works, but still being able to be a person, yeah. you know, that, it's most important, but still being like, okay, how do I maintain this host thing? You know what I mean? I, but yes, be me. Yeah, because you don't you, Jennifer, don't you sometimes feel kind of like a traffic guard? You're like, we'll be right back. Coming up next, we have this. <laughs> and, you, and you have to be yourself within that frame, right? Ex thank you. You said it best. You're a pro. <laughs> like, okay, all right. Yes, I should stick to the technicalities, but no, I need to be Jennifer here. Hold on, you know, finding a way to balance it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know you understand. Yeah. Yeah. You Which I'm still figuring out. You see me? Uh, I'm yeah. like, you're doing, no, please. I yeah. watch you every day. You're doing great. You had Miss Patty on. You, Miss, yes. you had Patty. I love her so much. What was that like? Oh, my God. It's, it was a dream. She was, it was like, Patti LaBelle has always been one of my musical idols, right? So to have her here on my couch, on the Jennifer Hudson show, what? What? And then, be, oh my God, Patti, we gotta sing a song. And my best friend, Walter, who's right there in the shot, like, he is a Patti LaBelle fanatic. So to be able to sing with her and then sing to him in that moment is real life moments happening for me, too. You know what I mean? That we're all experiencing together, which is, I think, uh, Really, really cool. You know, like I love it. I always think about, and you know this, Jennifer, because you liked Oprah as much as I do. Um, I always say yes. that's Patti LaBelle who sang Oprah's theme song. That's all I think about. I'm like, is she's kicking off her shoes and singing "Get with the Program." Yes, <laughs> yes. You know what? You know what I told Patti when she came. I said I really contemplated, like, oh, should I have Patti LaBelle sing the theme song yes. to Jennifer Hudson? Yes, show? Jennifer. No you know joke. What I mean? Jennifer, I said to my executive producer, I said, I'm going to tell Jennifer, I got an idea. I said, Jennifer, maybe season three, season four, she should do a duet with Patty. If Patty did Oprah's theme song, Patty should do Jennifer's theme song too. I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. Um, you just wait. Okay. Uh, we have a picture of you. How was the Super Bowl? You know what? <laughs> I had such a good time. Oh my God, I had so much fun. And it was so interactive and engaging. You know, like 
Sometimes it could be like, okay, hello, watch the game. But everybody was, you know, just flowing around and just having a good time. It felt like a Super Bowl party at the Super Bowl yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Oh. I had fun and I had to see Miss Rihanna. Oh, right? Oh, I had right? to see Miss Rihanna. Yes. Yeah. I needed to be in the place. It was a concert with the football game around it. <laughs> yes, and I was cheering for the teams too, but I was team I was team Rihanna. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we love you here. We love you here, Jennifer. I'll be in LA. I'll, my plane lands at three o'clock, so I'll be there around four. I'm, okay, come and see about me now. I'm gonna be okay. looking for you. All y'all, come on out. Okay, give it up for Jennifer, everybody. You can catch her show right here on Fox 9. Check your local listings. I love her. I do. I just love her. See, I say it 100 times a season, comes to play. She knows. And she's saying Dream Girls. And she, I mean, Dream Girls. I could have spent a half hour with her. <laughs> but again, I want Patti LaBelle to do her theme song because Get With The Program is, well, Patti LaBelle, I, I would love her to do our theme song too, <laughs> but I love Yam House. Maybe, maybe season 10 of our show. Anyway, we'll be right back. Back in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back. Ooh. The producers of our show, they know us, they get us. They know a dive bar segment will just make us happy. You know there are a few things in life I love more than my mom, my family, my dogs, and a dive bar. In that order, <laughs> just to be clear. I don't want my text from my mom. And our next guest loves them so much that she just wrote a very big article about them. Give it up for Star Tribune food writer, that my good friend, Joy Summers, everybody. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Thank you. Can we, uh, 37,000 feet overview, you said that nothing can get people riled up like a list, right? <laughs> like a good list. Like in dive bars, people are invested in their like favorite dive bars. You are These probably are, getting like, emails right personal. now as we sit here. Oh, I love the emails because first of all, I find out about places that either I haven't been to for a while or maybe I didn't enjoy as much, but I get to find other people's enjoyment of it. And I love people saying, you don't know what you're talking about when this <laughs> list has been years and years and years in the works. Like this is my passion. This is what my husband and I do for vacations. We just drive around and go to dive yeah. bars. <laughs> Y'all don't 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 come at her because she knows what she's talking about. This wasn't just facts. a list you made on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm, yeah, exactly. OK, let's start. We're going to divide this into two things local mm -hmm. first yes. uh, around the Twin Cities. So Brunson's. Brunson's is a relatively new bar in a really old bar location. It's over in St. Paul's East Side, which is a real working class blue collar neighborhood, very neighborhoody, and that's what you want in a great dive bar. They also have elevated food, so it's bar food, but it's bar food done really well. Chef Torrance Beavers does amazing things. He has a chopped cheese special on Sundays. He has this like fantastic twist on a banh mi sandwich that I love to get that's really bright and spicy and crunchy and savory and they make their own chips. And then the bar, nice and worn in, good polished old wood, good for leaning on, great beer list, and they have incredible cocktails, a really great whis whiskey list. See, if she just rattled that off, she just didn't do this on a Tuesday. Let's just, <laughs> so stop emailing her. Okay, CC Club. Oh, Icon. Come on. Right? Yes. You cannot yeah. talk about Minneapolis yeah. iconic bars without talking about the CC Club. And if you're a music fan, the replacements in the 1990s, major seminal band, this was their drinking spot. And not much has changed since the 80s when they used to go and get. Very set. little has changed. And Very that's, little. that's great. That's what, and I went back in there and it's just got this feeling of coziness. It's dark. There are Christmas lights up all year round. Yeah. The bartender has no business, you know, no patience for your business. Like if you're taking too long to order, next. He'll yes. come back. He'll come back, but no patience nope. if you don't know what you're doing. It's so good. Dusty's. Dusty's. Now Dusty's in Northeast is someplace I have such a love in my heart for. I've been going there been. for four years. Oh, I, I know, go. I know, Joy. Let's go. They Take have me. pull tabs, okay. which I know is a Minnesota <laughs> thing. And if yeah, I remember you, correctly, you are king pull tab. Like oh, you I, win. Oh, there is yes. 
Yeah. I've been taught by Obi-Wan, my mother-in-law, <laughs> and then I'm also the son of my mother, the bingo player. Yes. I come from, it's a perfect triangle. It That's all right, comes yes. together. For people who aren't from Minnesota, pull tabs are these little charitable gambling things. Yeah. So great. And the bar is so old that there's like 1940s cartoons on the men's and women's bathrooms. Like this place has not changed. Mannings. Mannings is a place anybody who went to the University of Minnesota will remember this place. This is a gopher haven. They serve schooners of beer that even in modern times are only seven dollars. It's like a fishbowl of beer. Like it is. For seven? Yeah. It's almost beer as a meal. Like it yeah. is, they're huge. So it's like a kid's swimming pool. <laughs> exactly. It's a little kiddie pool. <laughs> the spot. The spot. I mean, great name, right? Yeah. That's in St. Paul's West 7th, which has an abundance of great dive bars. And this is the kind of place where you creak open that old door. Everybody who's sitting at the bar will crane their necks to look to see, oh, do I know you? Yep. Where are you? Yeah, they know each other. And, and the drinks around. are crazy cheap. And the name, you can't get better than the name. The spot. And finally, a newer one. I was yes. wondering if this meteor. Okay, so this one, there was a lot of great debate about whether to include this because this bar has only been open for a couple of years, but it's in near North Minneapolis, which is this really great and I feel like just starting to bubble up with cool creative stuff part of Minneapolis. Yes. The bar itself is very, very old. It used to be called Stand Up Frank's, which was famous for its three for ones at like nine in the morning. We've taken, we've calmed down a little bit on that. Hear that, Kendall? <laughs> But Meteor is run by, these were fine dining, top of their game bartenders who decided they wanted to run their dream dive bar. So in addition to like a beer and a bump, you can also get like top flight Negroni. But you don't have to feel shishi poo poo. It is not it is not. Yeah. poo poo. Don't be no. like, oh, I heard fancy drinks. No, 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 no. The bathrooms. Yeah, also outside at certain times of year, they are located near a Ludafisk factory. Yep. So there is a perfume that lets you know. Perfume this is, is a, a nice word, Joy. This is a dive bar. And really quick, they had that bar shipped in. Remember, did you yes. hear that story? Yeah. That bar was, they found it like online or something mm -hmm. and had it trucked here. Anyway, I could go on. And we will, when we come back, not just the Twin Cities, okay? Again, yeah. Joy knows what she's doing. More of the list when we come back. Back in a moment. <laughs> um, no. You Welcome back. Oh, this is fun. We're talking dive bars with my buddy, Star Tribune food writer, one of the best, Joy Summers. We, now we talked, as I said, about uh, dive bars in the Twin Cities. We're going to expand it because we know there are people watching in, well, Seattle and Wisconsin and Minnesota. We're going to go greater Minnesota, upper mm -hmm. Midwest. Let's start in Superior Anchor Bar. Oh, the Anchor Bar. Yeah. You Ooh, will, the audience is with they, you on you this guys one, yeah. Know, right? Yeah, that's a it's a classic. And it's the kind of place where you walk in and you will never run out of things to look at. There is so much weird brick brack there. There is like a dentist chair, there's a deep sea diving guy, I've never there's been. weird pirate stuff, and they have a fantastic burger that's like $4. Executive producer Jeff just, Jeff just said that, yeah. Yeah, they're known for their burgers. And it is a great like when you say dive bar, this is a dive bar amped up to 11. And speaking of pull tabs, they have e-tabs there, and oh, you can always see who see? wins, and that bar wins a lot. I'm just going to say. <laughs> that bar is popular. If you go on like a Saturday morning, like you're going to be jostling for space. Yeah. It's, it's great. Paradise Lounge in Madison. In Madison. I love Madison for bar hopping. They have everything from like 1950s, like preserved in time, mid-century modern places to a bunch of places like the Paradise. I mean, first of all, Dive bars have to have a great name. Yeah. And Paradise, <laughs> Paradise Lounge is like, a great name. I'm going to Paradise. Yeah. yeah. There's a sign that promises eat, drink. It's all I want is good drinking times. Round bar, full of regulars, cheap drinks, low lights. Let's talk in general. Wisconsin mm -hmm. bars in general are its own yeah ecosystem. Exactly. Like I said, we loved a road trip and mostly we could just spend our whole lives like this is my retirement plan. Yeah. Driving through small towns in Wisconsin where can it's I be a in the camper office. behind you? <laughs> <laughs> we can camp out. We can camp out. There's a post office. There's a bar with like a sign for Schlitz or Blatz or some kind of old timey beer on the outside. And that's where you find the real town. That's where the community. Yeah, is. there's a town like that by the uh, in-laws cabin called Dalbo. And it is a, 
Joy, I can't believe you said that because it is literally a post office mm -hmm. and the dusty beaver, the uh, eagle, the eagle. I did it again. The dusty eagle. I've done it again. I did that. <laughs> Well, the dusty eagle <laughs> in Dolbo, not the dusty beaver. Okay, we can, let's. <laughs> that'll be the one that will open up when we retire. That's from our it. Day we'll jobs. open that up together. We'll open the dusty beaver. Uh, Glenlock Bar. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love the Glenlock Bar in Chippewa Falls, which yeah. we went to just because Lightning Kugels is there and you can get a free tour that ends with free beer. My husband and I were like, let's go. Let's go. And we spent the whole day going around finding bars, but we stayed. There's a little motel, and across the street is the bar that goes with the motel. Both are named Glen Lock. I did not see any Glens or Locks. <laughs> is it a Scottish lake? But it was very conveniently located, and the people could not have been nicer. I got to go. Paul's yeah. Tavern. Oh, Paul's Dubuque. Tavern. Down in Dubuque. Let's go down to Iowa. Sure. Dubuque, cute little river town. And Paul's Tavern has the most bizarre collection of, of taxidermy. dead animals. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> you walk in and there's like a polar bear looming over you. And it's kind of disturbing, but they do have plaques that explain like how these animals weren't like horribly or recently yeah. harvested in any manner. But there are these amazing displays and you get these cheap beers. Plus they have this like 1930s, one of the original like World's Fair hamburger making machines. So it just like roasts them and spits them out with these little warm squishy buns. And it's just like a couple of bucks and you get this little tiny burger and super cheap beer. How far is Dubuque from here? It's, I think it's like a four hour drive. It's okay. worth it. We'll drive for there. We'll it's for the fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not right now, but yeah. <laughs> Final one, Al Gin Supper Club. The Al Gin Supper Club is in beautiful Rhinelander, Wisconsin. I love that sign. Which, I love that sign. Home of the Hodag. Yeah, you've got to love a neon sign. It's oh. a real old fashioned supper club. It's tiny in the bar. The bartenders just make huge pitchers and pour them out as fast as they can. People are taking old fashions, sweet old fashions, regular old fashions. In Wisconsin, you're going to get a brand new old fashioned, usually sweet, maybe with some seven up in it. Just go with go it. Go with it. Yeah, because they're too busy to make yeah, you anything Don't be snooty. Else. Just go with it. <laughs> On Saturday, prime rib special nights, and that bar has those good like curves where you can lean your forearms into it and just watch the show. Read Joy's article, and then in 2025, look for our new bar, the Dusty Beaver. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it, Joy. We'll get Absolutely. some people involved. We'll do it. We'll do it. Check out our articles in the Star Tribune and follow Joy on social media. Search Joy Estelle. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. I've done that once before during our before the show. The Dusty Eagle. Oh, my God. We wanted to throw two more in there. Bunnies in St. Louis Park. We my, love bunnies. It's my bar. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to throw out Highway Inn, uh, Princeton, Cambridge area. Mm -hmm. All of those. <laughs> love the highway. I love you, Shannon. Oh, it's time yeah. for the world's shortest segment. The couple that inks together stays together. <laughs> Let's hope that's true for J-Lo and Ben Affleck. Jennifer Lopez shared pictures of her new tattoo that she got with Ben. Her tattoo is an infinity sign with the names Jennifer and Ben written in beautiful cursive that kids no longer know how to do. <laughs> His features two arrows with their initials. This was their first Valentine's Day together as a married couple. Haven't we learned that's never a good idea? Anyway, we'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> back in a moment. Love. We'll get a tattoo together. Welcome back. Uh, you know how this works, how we end the show? The surprise goodbye. We don't know what's in this segment until I read it live right now. Today a thief gets caught red pawed. Meet Teddy, who can't stop running around the room and chewing on his owner's shoe. What Teddy <laughs> didn't know was his owner was in the room and recording the whole thing. The dog's face when he realized he was caught has been viewed thousands of times on social media. <laughs> 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 Panic. <laughs> that is fantastic. Oh, good.
goodness gravy. Oh, Tomorrow on the show, JoJo Siwa will be live in our studio ahead of her appearance at Mall of America. If you want tickets, go to eventbrite.com and search The Jason Show. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're a kid being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Bye, everybody. Yeah.